Hey guys and happy holidays, it's Cheryl. I'm, bring, I'm really excited to bring you this new video um, discussing a topic that is near and dear to me. It is parenting a child on the autism spectrum during the holidays, special events, um, things of that nature. Like I told you guys in my initial video, you know, my videos are just gonna be kinda like laid back, um, kind of like talking amongst girlfriends or friends for that nature for, you know, if there's, you know, guys watching. So it's like a heart to heart talk. Um, you know, just like I'm talking to my families who I service in my support groups. Um, you know, what I'm about to talk to you guys is from my experience, um, from the experiences shared with me with the families that I support, um, the families who I support in our parent support network. So I just want to make that clarification that it's, um, in no way, um, a generalization it's coming from experience. Of course, everybody's experience is going to be different. Um, and like I said, in my initial video, this channel is basically based on experiences and sharing it with other families. You know, maybe there's other families out there, um, who can relate to the things that, um, you know, that are going to be discussed on this channel. So with that being said, let's just talk about holidays and parenting a child on the spectrum from my experience and the experience of my families. So as you can see, um, I have my little tree back there just for festive effects. Uh, I didn't want it just to be a white background since it is the holiday season. I have my, um, my Christmas sweater and my bows and, uh, oh, and my autism coffee cup that I've had for, uh, I don't know, I think I've probably had this for a while now. Um, this was actually given at like one of our events, so. Uh, cheers. Uh, okay, so I wanted to do this video because special events and the holidays, family functions and things of that nature. Um, in my experience, parenting a child who has autism is very challenging. It takes a lot of preparation. Um, you know, spontaneity is very at a low percentage in our household. Um, not to say that we don't do things on a whim um, and have been successful at doing it. However, the times that I have done that with my daughter, it's been a little difficult just trying to get out the door. Um, for my child, um, you know, crowds, being in a familiar environment, um, loud, repetitious noises, um, and just the overall transition from being in her comfort zone, which is at home, to getting ready and getting out the door can be very, um, can be a very challenging time for her. She gets very anxious. Um, you know, she starts making vocalizations, she'll be a little resistant. So the key factor to coping with that as a parent is basically trying to remain calm as much as possible because what I've learned in, you know, in dealing with these situations, these challenging situations with her is that you know if you if i start not not you but me but if now i start to get all roused writhed up is that a word if i start to get all worked up and get upset and now you know i'm starting to yell or scream or the tone of my voice my body language you know is 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 emitting this negativity then it causes her um her behavior now to become worse um, she gets now more anxious and she gets more worried. So it doesn't help the situation to get out the door. Um, usually when we are planning events, um, I have to, my daughter's very, she's a visual learner. So I have to put things on a calendar. Most times I would say maybe 90, 90% 90 of the time I would have to put it on a calendar and, um, we prepare all the way up until the day of it. If it's an unfamiliar place, I'll host, I'll show her pictures of it on the internet. 
um, you know, if there's a magazine or a brochure about it, then, you know, I'll show her that all the while to try to just help her become less anxious of what's about to happen. So, you know, there have been times where she's been fantastic. You know, she transitioned well, she maybe got a little anxious, made a couple of vocalizations, maybe was a little bit resistant, but then let's say overall, she was fine. She adapted very well. Now there have been times too throughout the years parenting my daughter where I just have to know uh, when her when she's reached her threshold um, where her tolerance level is just that's it she's done you know there is no okay wait five minutes two seconds or things like that because um, the more I try to make her wait now when she's already reached her threshold then um, the more likely it is now to increase the chances of her engaging in a maladaptive behavior in public or at a family function. So also my daughter knows how to tell time. She knows. Um, so for me, I have found that instead of using vague things like, okay, we're going to go later or, you know, in a minute, you know, I show her on the face of the clock, the time. And let's say if it's, I don't know, two o'clock. And I'll tell her, okay, at 2.30, we're going to get dressed. Or at 2.30, you know, we're going to get ready to go. So things like that. Now, granted, you know, life happens. And then there are things that throw us off balance. And the routine gets, you know, thrown off. So in those kinds of instances, we just basically just have to deal with it. You know, if 2.30 comes and something comes up that we're not able to do it at that time, then I will more or less estimate another frame of time and give her that, which has, you know, it's worked so far up until now. I mean, it's a hit or miss type of thing. But overall, you know, you just kind of, I have to just basically like go around it and plan it. Now, as far as attending family functions, um, my daughter is 17, actually 17 and a half now. So my daughter was diagnosed right before her third birthday. And in the beginning of her diagnosis, um, it was very, I guess, difficult for, um, for, for even me to try to figure out how to, um, you know, figure out like her tolerance level. Um, you know, I didn't understand in the beginning how come, you know, when I would take her to birthday parties, um, you know, she really didn't want to engage or she just stayed next to me the whole time. And I just thought maybe she was just shy. However, you know, as time went on and I learned more about her, um, her diagnosis, then I realized that, you know, the overstimulation, just too many things going on at one time, causing sensory overload in her was, um, you know, what, what was um, bothering her. And, you know, unless you're living this lifestyle of parenting a child on the spectrum, then you're, you're not going to fully understand. I know there's a lot of my friends and a lot of my family members that like to say that they understand and that it's okay. Um, you know, just bring her. But the thing is, is that when you're in the moment as a parent, you're very concerned and you're very worried about, you know, your child's safety overall, right? Uh, I mean, like children, my daughter's age, you just kind of, typical children, you just leave them be, you know, right? To just go do their own thing. Typical children her age are already independent, most, most of them, right? So for my daughter, I can't do that. She has to have adult supervision at all times and she cannot be left alone without adult supervision. Um, you know, most of the time she's a homebody. She stays in her room. She plays her video game. She's on her iPads. But guess what? I got a video camera that's right on her at all times because I have to know um, and be aware of what she's doing. Um, you know, if she's, God forbid, trying to put something in her mouth because those are one of her, um, you know, her, her, those are one of her, uh, what do you call that? I lost my train of thought now. Um, mouthing, that's one of her maladaptive behaviors. Um, you know, sometimes, who knows, you know, she, I don't know, she could be climbing the wall trying to get something and fall. And, you know, just having the camera in her room gives me a sense of security and peace of mind. You know, because other than that, before I put a camera in her room, I was doing bed checks every 30 minutes. Um, you know, going to her room every 30 minutes, that gets, you know, that gets a little, a little tiring. 
So I just put, um, you know, a nanny cam, so to speak, in her room and just basically have it on all night, all night and all day, just to be able to see what's what's going on there just for her, you know, because of her safety. Um, she does, she is aware that it is there. Um, and, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, that's invading her privacy. Um, you know, she might not like that. You know, I've showed it to her. She knows where it is. She knows where it's plugged in. And I have explained to her what it's for. And, you know, my daughter really, when it comes to like technology, things like that, she kind of picks up things very fast. So if she really didn't want it on, she would turn it off because, you know, like the light or the computer or the video game, things of that nature, she'll turn it off with no problem. So, um, so I have that. And also, you know, we, we just basically have to plan, you know, we, and, and also one of the th challenges that we faced as, um, you know, parenting a child um, on the spectrum with the holiday season, we've had to have s separate celebrations, so to speak, right? Um, we've been invited to family functions where there's just going to be way too many people in one, you know, small area. And, you know, I have to kind of pick and choose and, um, you know, pick my battles, so to speak, you know, and, and decide, you know, is this something that she's actually really going to enjoy? Um, you know, being in a crowded area, she's just really going to sit there and, and not really engage no matter how many times we try, you know, try to engage her. I mean, in, in the past where we've had family functions, baby showers, birthday parties, and, you know, special event functions, you know, we have taken her with us and she has, you know, blown us away and surprised us so you know i'm always trying i'm always you know exposing her trying to encourage her trying to get her out the door to do new things but you know overall it's a challenge it's not easy you know and then i and i also have a toddler so it sometimes gets very very difficult going out the door and you know with the separate celebrations um you know fortunate for me my immediate family, which are my, my sons, my, my older son, you know, he's, he's married, he has a wife and children. So whenever we have functions that involve my son and his wife and his kids, you know, we have to plan, plan around that. Sometimes we're not able to be there all together because it, it can be a difficult situation for my daughter. And then, you know, I guess there's a part of me too that doesn't want to be a burden on anybody else because if she starts having a behavior at this family function, you know, I, I there's a sadness part of me that really feels, you know, a, a little disappointed. Um, because even though people sometimes say they understand or they try to say they understand or that they, they know what you're going through and it's okay, you still get those stares, you know what I mean? And that's actually happened at a family's house of mine, you know, a couple of years ago where, um, you know, my daughter started having a behavior. I actually don't know what happened, but she started having a behavior and there were other people there. It wasn't just my family members, the ones who were hosting, um, but there were other people there who didn't know her. So, you know, it, it became a very painful experience for me. Um, so even though whoever's hosting, you know, the party or the event may say they understand or may say that, you know, um, it's okay, you know, there are other people there. And who's to say that, you know, we then we're in a situation where do we want people or our family members to announce to the other people that, you know, I have a family member that's coming over that has um, autism and, you know, they may need extra time or a separate space. I mean, you know, there's it's kind of like a catch 22 situation. You don't really want people or your family members announcing to everybody else who doesn't know your child that because you feel like you have to explain yourself 50 million times. But then on the same token too, it's like you kind of want them to say that so that you can have a little bit more understanding, compassion, and I think most of all, acceptance. That's really what it is. As a parent, you know, I it's it's not really just sympathy that I'm looking for. It's It's acceptance and understanding and compassion really i mean just overall just overall compassion especially because at the end of the day she's um you know she's not a child but she's a teen she's a young person where you know if you observed her enough you would be able to tell that she has special needs so 
you know, this holiday season, um, you know, all I'm asking is that, you know, for, for the families who have family members on the spectrum or who have families with special needs, um, you know, maybe you wouldn't, maybe you've invited them a million times and they keep saying no. Um, you know, my suggestion is just keep inviting them and maybe help be part of the solution. You know, maybe help set a quiet space for the child or the family member who has autism and that when things get overwhelming, that they can go to that space. I think, you know, if we were given that option when my child was younger, I think maybe we would have accepted, um, you know, invitations a little bit more. But at that time, you know, I actually wasn't really aware to, to make that recommendation. And I think I wasn't at a place in time um, where I am now as a parent to be vocal enough to even request that. Um, you know, but now as my daughter is older, um, I am a little bit more vocal with requesting accommodations for her. So keep inviting that parent. Um, help, you know, prior to the event, come up with ways and solutions to come up to help make the situation a little bit more comfortable for them. Because, you know, they, they you know, our kids should be included, right? And they should be able to enjoy all the festivities and the quality of life that, you know, our typical kids do. And um, even though it, it can be very, very challenging, you know, for us to get out the door most of the times, you know, when when we do have a successful transition, it's like a party. So, um, you know, just, I think just that, you know, I, I think if we can just really take the time to sit down with, you know, with the families and try to figure out a solution, I think that would be great. And, um, you know, um, I'm talking to you guys right now and I feel like I'm gonna cry. So maybe I'm, I apologize if I'm actually repeating myself. Um, I actually probably missed a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you guys, but um, I should have wrote notes, but I just wanted to just be real and come out with it. And um, I do have to say that, um, I wanna say that you know, I, I thank God for my son's wife's family um, because they've been so accepting of my daughter and they've loved her from the beginning. And I'm so proud of my son for picking such a wonderful woman. Um, I'm crying now. I'm crying on camera. I don't want to do the ugly cry because I'm gonna mess up. You know, I'm gonna mess up my makeup, y'all. I I haven't even launched this this um this channel long enough yet uh, that for you guys to see the ugly cry. So, whoo. Huh, okay. So, as a parent of a ch of, you know who have older children, the one thing that you always pray is that your your kids become you know your kids are good people and that you know your kids will pick um in each other, you know, pick compatible, compatible spouses. And I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful that, you know, my older son, um, you know, was able to meet a really good woman who loves my daughter and has helped take care of my daughter. And, you know, even her family and her, you know, her mom and her sister and, you know, all of their family have always been very, very accepting and very understanding of my daughter. So I'm so, so, so grateful. So, you know, I just want to leave you guys, you know, with that, um, you know, just food for thought sort, sort of thing. And I will talk to you guys next time on the next video. Bye. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Okay. All right.